like 702 or 3 or something like that. Um, are there any public comments before we get started? Okay, I guess not. So we'll, if anybody wants to make comments on these public hearings, they could fill out a card and bring it up to Kelly. Uh, so we'll start with the public hearings. Um, Kelly, is the continuance, is that considered a public hearing? Or do we just have one before I start? So if anyone is going to, it is considered a public hearing, um, but you don't need to open it unless there are public comments on that item. If I can keep things the way they are once I get going. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So I'll read the statement prior to the public hearings opening. There, so I guess technically are two public hearings. Um, yeah, I should have my glasses. Um, there are two public hearings on land use applications as scheduled tonight. A staff report has been prepared for each application and has been made available to the public seven days before the first public hearing. The staff report identifies the approval criteria that apply to each applicant's proposal. Staff has analyzed the criteria which are contained in the staff report. Quasi-judicial hearing procedure that the commission will follow is set out in the state law and the Oregon City Municipal Code. The hearing procedure steps are shown on the chart. Anyone wishing to speak should fill out a speaker's card and give it to the planning staff before the hearing. Speakers will proceed in the order in which the card is received. You should fill out your address on the card so the city will notify you of its final decision. For the public record, please begin all testimony stating your name. Testimony and evidence should be directed toward the applicable approval criteria. If you believe other criteria apply in addition to those addressed in the staff report, identify and discuss those criteria and explain how and why you believe they apply to the application under consideration. A person may submit any written material while the public record is open on each application. Any written material received by the city staff during the time period in which the record is open will be placed in the record. Written material submitted during the public hearing must be presented to the city staff in order to become part of the record. If a person intends for PowerPoint presentations, oversized poster boards, reports, pictures, or other exhibits used in their oral testimony to place in the record, copies must be submitted to the city staff while the record is open. If they are not given to the staff, they will not be included in the record. Any person wishing a continuance to present additional evidence and testimony or to keep the record open to respond to new evidence must make that request before the public testimony portion of the hearing is closed. If the historic review board makes a decision with which you would disagree, any issue that you may wish to appeal must have been raised for the consideration of the city commission or LUBA or both without raising the issue on the record with sufficient specificity and accompanied by statements or evidence and that the city and all parties can respond the issue will not be deemed appealable to the State Land Use Board of Appeals. In addition, the failure of an applicant to raise constitutional or other issues relating to proposed conditions of approval with sufficient specificity to allow the local government or its designee to respond to the issue precludes an action for damages in circuit court. Okay, uh, for each public hearing, We'll open the record for that file. Um, but I'm going to start by asking, does any commissioner have any ex parte contacts, conflicts of interest, bias, or any other statement to declare? I'm going to make a statement on there. I am a licensed real estate broker in Oregon, and in that capacity, I represent buyers and sellers of residential, re, uh, residential properties, including those in Kanema. This particular piece of property, my wife and I did represent the seller at the time the applicant purchased it. That I do not see as a conflict of interest because there was no contact with the buyer in regards to uh, buildability or design. Uh, for the record, can you just um, make a statement on whether you think this affects your ability to make an unbiased decision? It does not. Thanks. Um, we had a presentation by the applicant last week at the Kanema Neighborhood Association. 
Uh, I did not participate in that uh, discussion. And uh, there again, there's no conflict there. Cool. Okay, has any commissioner visited the site? Yes. 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 For the record, all four commissioners have visited the site. Does anyone in the audience wish to question any of the commissioners about these disclosures? All right, well, regarding um, PC 19-094 and HR 19-00005, historic review for new construction in the Kanema National Register District on 4th Avenue, I can turn it over to staff. Um, but I will state before that, um, there will be public testimony. There'll be 15 minutes for the applicant, five minutes for representatives of a recognized neighborhood association, government agency, or other incorporated public interest organization, three minutes for individuals, five minutes for applicants rebuttal. And we'll hold to that. Um, so anyway, go ahead. Great. Thanks, Chair McLaughlin. Uh, before I start, I just want to make sure that you all received um, the public comment that was submitted on Friday uh, from the Kanema Neighborhood Association. I emailed that to you all, and I have a hard copy if anyone needs to look at that, or if any member of the public would like to look at that. Um, we have a hard copy up here. Um, and I have some correspondence also to add to the record from the um, applicant uh, regarding um, dimensions and heights of neighboring structures and retaining walls proposed. Um, I will talk about this in my staff report, um, but I'll also pass these two pages to you, um, and I'll clarify the information in it during my report. So this is a GLUA 1927 uh, and HR 1905 for a new single family home in a detached garage with ADU above in the Kanema National Register District on 4th Avenue. Trying to get our light settings changed, but I'm not sure if... For mood lighting. There we go. Uh, so the uh, property is a 5,000 square foot lot that is located next to uh, 702 Fourth Avenue um, and between Blanchard Street and Apperson, uh, unimproved Apperson Street. The, um, the site slopes up from Fourth Avenue. Uh, and then it's relatively flat before sloping up again um, to the uh, property behind it. Um, the house at 702 Fourth is an existing, his, uh, contributing historic structure in the district. Um, the lot behind this uh, property was recently approved for a new um, two-story or one-and-a-half-story um, bungalow design home with a detached garage and ADU. And so once you get up the slope from 4th Avenue, this is what the site looks like. Um, and then you can see on the right there is another new, um, new construction in Kanema, or relatively new in the past few years. And then um, if you're standing on 4th uh, and looking up, you can kind of see a set of old um, stairs going up to the property. Uh, and then if you're standing at the top of those stairs, you can see some trees um, in front of the property as well. And then looking at the historic home, um, you can see the side of that. And then looking the opposite direction, um, there are a few trees clustered in the front corner of the property. 
So uh, there was a shed on the property until 2000, uh, December 2018 when it was removed. Um, the applicant didn't request demolition approval of this shed um, from the HRB, which is technically required for all structures in the historic district, even if they are in this condition um, and not a primary dwelling. Um, and so I've got recommended a condition of approval to apply for historic review of the demolition and then obtain any required building permits if they would have been required, which I think they would have been. Uh, it's about a 600 square foot um, shed. Uh, so again, the uh, nearby homes include the A.E. Davis house, uh, which is in the upper left hand, um, it's right next to the property. Across the street, the yellow home there is the Draper house, and um, those are both contributing. And then the home in the lower left corner is at 7164. Um, it's a minimal traditional house. It's out of period for the district, uh, so it's not considered to be contributing. Uh, so the site plan shown here, we've got the house placed kind of um, the center or the front of the lot and then um, at the detached garage behind. Driveway access would be from uh, an existing neighboring driveway, um, so it would be shared uh, and then it would, um, a new section of driveway would come across a 12 foot wide alley um, and then lead into that detached garage. And so looking um, at the side profile here, the slope, the topography, um, you can see uh, the garage um, is slightly, uh, not quite as tall as the house. The proposed, um, here's the front facade facing 4th Avenue. Um, we've got a vernacular design. Uh, one over one windows, double hung, hip roof front porch. Um, roof pitch is proposed as 812, which matches the home next door. Um, the applicant proposes seven inch lap siding, um, smooth hardy plank. Um, the, this design or very similar to this design was approved last year on Third Avenue um, on the site of a, a home that was um, that burned down, and so that the board approved a very similar design just a year ago on a different site. Uh, side and rear elevations here. Then we can refer back to these later if we need to during our discussion. Um, this is a one and a half, it appears to be one and a half stories. We've got the Eve kind of uh, in the second story window area. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm looking at when I'm looking at um, how wh what to consider the house as far as number of stories. So the eave kind of lines up within the window area and not above the windows. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Although if you do look at um, the interior plan, you know, you've got uh, almost a full height wall here. Um, so here are the floor plans and then the detached garage um, with ADU on top. And so because of the elevation change, the back side of that is um, kind of partially buried. Uh, and there is a retaining wall proposed along the back um, that would, you know, be kind of part of the building here and then extend out um, on the other uh, where the kind of asphalt is, or the concrete here. Um, so a couple items, quick items to get through. Uh, along with the shed removal, there were a few trees um, removed last year. Um, you can see the stumps in these photos. Um, I have a condition of approval to replace the trees in order to pres preserve tree canopy. Um, so even though these were larger trees, the condition of approval is to replace with a two inch caliper tree, um, but a, a large size species. So dug for a big leaf maple, um, Western red cedar, you know, something large. Um, 
I'm in the staff report and the condition. Um, I only mentioned one uh, tree removed, um, and then since then I realized there were two. So I'd like to recommend now that we modify the condition to be two trees instead of one. Um, then we've got a retaining wall uh, in the back along the garage that we just talked about. Um, this a portion of the wall is proposed as seven feet. Uh, now, HRV policies um, and generally uh, what, what, what we would allow is six feet um, tall maximum behind, behind the front of a house. Um, seven feet is, if, for a retaining wall, seven feet is allowed um, in our normal code. Um, and then in the design guidelines, um, the, the actual guideline reads, minimize the height and presence of walls. Uh, so this is in the very back of the site. Um, so I think the presence of this wall is minimized. Um, and so it's up to the board to determine whether you think the, the height is okay in this instance. Um, there is no prohibition on walls over seven feet. So you're okay to approve this if you think it's compatible and it meets the guideline. Do you have a question? Yeah, on this email that he sent, it says most mm -hmm. of the wall's at five feet, that the last part of it goes to seven, but they could slope it to five. Yeah, so. so that's well under the seven feet. So. Yeah, so that, uh, it sounds like that might be an Based option as well. Um, and so I think maybe that's something that we can ask the applicant to discuss in their presentation, because um, I'm, I, you know, I'm not quite sure gotcha. as far as the engineering, if that's possible. I mean, it sounds like it is according to the applicant, but um, that's something to discuss. Um, so the main issue uh, with this, I think, so the, in general, the vernacular design is compatible. It's appropriate. Um, I didn't find any issues with any major issues with the proportions and design of the house. Um, I think the, the only issue here is uh, the fact that it's right next to this historic vernacular that's very similar looking um, and smaller than um, the proposed house. So in looking at kind of what, what the impact of this new house would be on the his smaller historic home, um, I looked at the height, um, the width, and then how close to the street each house is, um, and then how far apart they are. So um, you can see here, um, I labeled the topography, um, the grade, and so there's gonna be a little bit of grading done on this portion of the site, but for the most part, the, the um, base elevation of both structures is gonna be almost the same. Um, so they're not, one's not gonna be sitting a whole lot higher than the other. They're gonna be at, built at almost the same um, elevation. Um, the new home is proposed about six feet closer to the street than the historic home. Um, and then the width of the new house is 25 feet, the historic home is 20 feet. Uh, the height of the new home is proposed to be 32 feet versus approximately 28 feet for this house. Now, the staff report says 25 feet, and then I had lots of discussions with the um, applicant uh, and our building department staff um, about, you know, how tall this house is. It's there's you know, we're kind of just eyeballing it. Um, the applicant actually had a laser measure that we, um, I actually went out with the applicant's contractor um, to see the measurement happen with the laser measure. So what we determined is that um, this house is probably around 28 feet is our best guess. So um, I wanna make sure that the final staff report reflects that 20, it's about 28 feet and not 25, which is what I, had written originally. Um, so it's about 14% taller. You're saying the existing house is 20? Existing this, house. This shows it at 29. So yes, so there's that, but the roof pitch we think is actually 812, oh, which brings 10. that down a little bit. Got you. Um, so we 
after that measurement happened, then we went out again and looked at it again and decided it was about 28 feet. So, um, and then there's a, uh, approximately 18 feet proposed between the two structures here. So um, I think that spacing 18 feet between the two is, uh, that's ample spacing, yes? Uh, I've noticed discrepancy between some of the maps and aerials regarding the uh, property line. Mm -hmm. The picture right. shows it here going right through the Davis house. Yes, and that's not correct. So okay. the, the plot it, plan that you started with here showed, the, the architect's plot plan mm -hmm. showed it, the house entirely on its own property yes. there. Yes, so this is this is a lot more accurate, and this is about okay. eight feet, I think, here. Um, so I've, I've got a measurement, I believe, right there. So yeah, it's actually almost nine feet. So sorry, flip it around. Um, now we're looking at it in the other direction, but it's about nine feet from the existing home to the property line, and then almost 10 feet um, from the new home to the property line. So 18 to 19 feet of separation between the two structures. Um, and so uh, I think the spacing is ample, um, but the combination of a house that's wider, taller, and closer to the street, I think overpowers the Davis home. Uh, and so I recommend a condition of approval to um, bring the house back a little bit and, and potentially also reduce the height a little bit. And I'm t in talking with the applicant, um, uh, bringing the house back about three feet um, seemed to be doable. Um, and then uh, bringing it down a foot or two also seems doable. So I'll let the applicant talk about that um, when they come up a little bit. Um, and then if so, if you do move it back three feet, um, you reduce the spacing in between the house and the garage. But right now there's about 11 feet there. And so you, you, there's room to move it back. Uh, and then um, two other minor issues. Uh, one, composite decking is uh, proposed on the front porch. Um, because the house is perched so far above the street, um, my recommendation would be it, uh, if we allow it only on the decking on the floor and not on the stairs, um, and that it be um, the color chosen or the hue or shade chosen for the composite decking match um, one of the colors on the house, the trim or the body. Um, and then uh, there is vertical siding um, proposed underneath the porch. Um, the staff report says that vertical siding isn't typical of Kanima and says uh, has a condition to do something different. However, the applicant pointed out that there's vertical siding on the Davis house next door, right here under their porch, um, and all the way around the sides of the house as well on the, um, you know, underneath. Um, so, you know, in looking at that, it, it didn't, it wasn't clear if it was T111, it wasn't clear how, um, what age it was, if it was original or not. And so um, knowing that, you know, that exists, it's probably not original. Um, you know, I am kind of looking for a direction from the board on to what, as to whether the proposed vertical siding on the new home is appropriate or not. Um, it will be mostly shielded um, with the uh, um, landscaping um, that's required uh, as a condition, so, and proposed in the plans clearly. Um, so, so a little bit of board direction on that would be helpful. Um, and so I've got the conditions of approval here with the ones highlighted that we might be modifying, I think. Um, and so we can refer to these as needed uh, during your discussion. And that's all I've got. Is there any other questions for staff? Okay. Well, if we could have the applicant come forward and state your name and the city that you live in. And you've got 15 minutes, but you don't have to take it all.
Chair McLaughlin, hi Kelly. Uh, my name is Mark Beerwagon. I'm a general contractor. I built the house next door for Mr. Beislein, the applicant. I live in Happy Valley, Oregon. Um, I wanted to uh, first of all address the shed. Um, Mr. Beislein had removed the shed, and uh, I'm sure he's talked to staff about the, the shed, but I wanted to share some of the comments that, that he made to me. Um, the concern was the structural integrity, as you could see from the pictures, it was kind of falling down. And uh, Mr. Beislein lives in uh, the house, and the house below is where the grandchildren live, so there was concern about the uh, this, the shed as well as rusty nails. It was full of junk and rat's nests and um, uh, some other hazards and he just felt it was Im important to take it out and uh, I'd be happy to comply with uh, whatever the board thinks is appropriate to um, as a condition. Um, also wanted to note that the, the stairs that go up the front were uh, apparently actually installed within the last year, although they look old. Hmm. They're, they're stackable blocks and have been recently installed before, right before he purchased the property. Um, the intention, and I discussed this with staff when I was on site, the intention is to bring the grade up at the front to match the adjacent grade, um, is it, it's the Davis house right mm -hmm. next door. Matching that grade would bring the front grade up about two feet, reducing two to three steps. Also, um, more of that, it would shield more of that skirting, less of that would be visible also kind of reducing that uh, difference in height that currently exists at 14%. Um, I did look at, I did note the design guidelines and I think it, it uh, talks about 20% being, if it's within 20%, then it, um, mm -hmm. it's an approvable amount in terms mm -hmm. of difference, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Also wanted to note that there was, uh, Mr. Beislein only removed one tree. There was actually when he, the, the, he has pictures from when they originally purchased uh, the property next door, um, pic uh, photos of four years ago and the, the, the stump, the second stump was a stump at that time. So it's, it was removed some time ago. So we would uh, wanna just, uh, mitigate with uh, one tree planting and we can provide those photos if needed. I think, uh, do, is it appropriate to offer an exhibit? Sure. Okay. Um, these are, this is a, one of the exhibits, this is just the photo of the, photos of the, do I hand them up there or hand them to you? Maybe. So this is uh, in reference to house placement. And I draw your attention to 625 and 707. One of the homes that was uh, called out in the staff report um, was the, the Draper house right across the street and right next door to the Draper house, 625. I wanted to highlight the fact that there's there's quite a bit of difference. And 625 is a newer home that uh, was, I don't know when it was approved. Um, 2016? 2016, and there's about 15 feet of difference in the front of those two houses. Um, and you can all, you also notice that the detached garage is much closer to 707 than the 18 feet that we're uh, proposing. So 
our our hope is to not not lower the house and not move the house back. It would impact the livability of the site in the back as the the back porch and the garage uh, come together. Um, reducing that down would would uh, just um, provide much less living space in the back, and that's the only yard space that uh, this home is going to be a home for a young family. Actually, the uh, Mr. Beislein's uh, daughter and son-in-law and grandchildren who live in uh, currently in 716 will be moving into this house. And so um, yard space for the kids is important and uh, having that separation between the detached garage and the house is, uh, is important. We're not really in a position to move the garage back. Uh, we're really constrained by the uh, uh, site conditions. We've kind of pushed the maximum according to our geotech, our structural, and our civil engineers. Um, Oh, and one other thing I would note that um, the trees that exist in the front and uh, the tree that we plant for mitigation would obviously also shield the house and the impact that it would have from the street. So that's all I have if you have uh, questions. So you're going to bring the grade up, so you're going to bring dirt in to raise that front of the house up and then grade it out. Well, I would say we wouldn't bring uh, dirt in off from off site, but when the house is excavated, right, we would that stockpile. dirt, you're, yeah. you're going to bring it around and grade it out front. Correct. I got you. And that wall in the back, you you can go to five feet, but it would still be an engineered wall. Correct? It would still be an engineered wall. I think we could get it to five feet. You know, when those things are drawn, they're always uh, the 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 yeah. structural guy and the architect are using topo and the, so they but when we when we get out to the site and are addressing the site condition it would be yeah likely yeah. that we could grade that and bring that down at least certainly down six inches to comply with the maximum sure I height. Could, got it um, does anybody have any questions You said the difference in height or width that's allowable is plus or minus 20 percent. That's so the design guidelines, um, you know, they're it's we have kind of recommended and then prohibited. Mm -hmm. And under prohibited, uh, it says houses that are greater than um, more than 20 percent greater than the typical height in Kanima, in, in the district. And what does recommended say? Uh, you know, to, I can pull that up um, and read it to you uh, verbatim, but I think in general it, um, it talks about homes being, or new buildings um, being in keeping with the Typical heights of the neighbor of the district, so there's right. nothing. But twenty percent maybe with the neighborhood. It's yeah. So it because doesn't it, it doesn't mention the uh, houses next door. It talks about of the in the, within the district, and so in the staff report, I talk about other vernacular homes in the district that are um, on the taller side. Um, there are some that are, are a couple of them that I found that I think are close to thirty feet, um, and then. The rest seem to be around 24, 25. Um, so that's a little I, innocuous. I mean, you're you're taking a very broad. Yeah. And I'm looking at well, it, it certainly meets that criteria with the next yeah. door house. Right. So it's not more than 20 percent taller than the house next door, or I think that typical of the district, I, you know, vernaculars. I, I don't think that this house exceeds that 20 percent. No. It, you know, we're not in that realm at all. Yeah. Gotcha. No other questions. No other questions. 
Okay, thank you. Thanks. Um, do we get any public comments? Or is there anybody from a neighborhood association that's an actual representative that represents the neighborhood? That would be the applicant. Is <laughs> our. Uh, okay. Well, if that's the case, then um, Paul Edgar, if you want to come forward, you got three minutes. Hi, I'm representing Friends of Kenema, a 501c and authorized representative. Ah, okay. All right. Thank you. I'll be short and brief. Uh, Paul Edgar, uh, Friends of Kenema, resident of Kenema. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that I, I really like the design. Uh, I think it's, it's complementary uh, to the house next door uh, and uh, height-wise and image-wise, uh, it does not detract. Uh, the, the couple little concerned areas, one is the wall. I, a previous uh, efforts have said that the wall should be five and you could set back a little stagger and put another retaining wall, small wall up and that should not be a problem to resolve. Uh, the front posts on the porch uh, should be uh, neuralized where they is right now they're showing us uh, just uh, square posts and they, you know, that's a minor thing to uh, make them look more appropriate in that design. And as far as the the kind of vertical boards underneath the porch, I think those are, I think that's a, a, a nice uh, approach to doing it. And uh, uh, as they move around to some of the soils for the cut to put the garage in the back, uh, adding a little bit there to, uh, to reduce the, uh, and align it to the driveway. I was there when they tore down the, uh, the shed, and it was dangerous. I concur with what was said. Uh, getting it out of there was the smartest thing that could be done, and it, need, and it just it needed to be done. And uh, I'm sure that all the apologies for, but it was done for public safety. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I will say the posts are very vernacular um, because they're very plain. Mm -hmm. Anyway, okay. Is there any rebuttal? Before I close the public hearing? Okay. Then I will close the public hearing and leave it to the board to discuss. David. Kelly, do you have a photo of the Davis house that would show what the uh, front porch columns there look like? They look like they're square. They've got a little, looks like a little crown on top, but they're very, uh -huh. very plain. Yeah. That's a pretty easy fix. Good call. Anybody else? I no. Nope. Ready for comments? Yeah, we're yeah. ready. Um, <coughs> My only thing would be I don't see an issue with keeping the house where it's at. I think if it was to be pushed back, it would um, only take away from the proportion aesthetic of the layout of the site. Um, and so anyway, that's all I got to say. So somebody wants to make a motion. Oh, no, I've got yeah, right. I got a couple of comments. So well, I was asking for that. <laughs> okay. Well, I was waiting for you to finish. Oh, for hey. the chair to finish. Yeah. Nah, I, um, I think I agree with you on the siding of the house. Uh, you know, it preferably it would be set farther back than the the contributing home, but there's really not room for that on the site and lining pushing it back so that they're more lined up. I think will just increase the. Mm -hmm. Comparison and, and so I think I'm I don't think pushing it back a couple of feet would really do much anyway. Um, so I think I'm okay with the way it is. Um, the one issue that I have is I think the the garage structure is too tall. Um, 
I think it should be straight up a story and a half. Um, it looks like there are, you know, it's using manufactured trusses, which is adding height without adding interior height. Um, maybe, I don't know, you can comment on that better than I can, but uh, I think that could be brought down quite a bit. Is there, um, a, um, is there a different elevation for besides that one? Uh -huh. Uh, yeah. Um, they use, in the, uh, the narrative submission, they use the example of the house on 3rd Avenue. Um, it's on page, if I find it here. Uh, where'd that go? Right here. Yeah. Uh, which is a similar size house, and the garage is much more complimentary that. by being a true one and a half story, not a. And so you know, this garage is almost a full two story. The, the garage there was built to be compatible with the other house. a different design yeah, yeah. for the house that burnt to the ground. Yeah, and they mm -hmm. kept it. So yeah, they saved the garage. That's all they saved. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. existing, but I see what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, depends on the perspective you're looking at. The tallest part of this house is really facing the back of the house. The where the cars go in, it's it is very tall. Um, it's a a twelve. It's fuzzy, but everything's fuzzy. Um, so what you're saying that could be a story and a half that the pony walls could be brought down. Everything's vaulted, I believe, inside the yeah the ADU. Um, um, on page nine, I think it uh, the staff report, particularly on that elevation that shows both. You know, it feels awkward to me. Uh, is there can can you is there a section of the garage? This one. Section drawing. Uh, yes, I can get that up. Seemed like there was one for the the garage. Um, come on, there's gotta be. Oh, wait. it's uh, the very last page. Last page. Of the... There it is. All right. So it looks like. Oh, thanks. Hallelujah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh, here we go. Garage upper level. 201. Uh, just give me a sec here. So 194.86. It's about seven feet. It could be brought down. It could be brought down a foot or so, a foot and a half. I mean, you could, you could bring it down. That's what you're saying. That that wall could be brought down because I, there's scissor trusses inside. Right. I mean, I would, I would. My purpose would be to bring it down more than that. <laughs> but um, that might be too low. Yeah. So would you be talking about uh, replacing the uh, trusses with stick framing? I mean, I, that's what I would do in this situation, but. Um, I get all of that other than the only comment would be is this is behind the house completely and it's on the uphill side where it's almost going to be tough to see short of driving up I think right. but I know what you're saying I mean we it's taller but it's also completely subjugated yeah we do well we do have you know there's a proposed home right behind it as well yeah and things it's not you know it, it won't be hidden from Everyone, right, I guess, but I mostly from the public right away. Yeah, it'll be tough to see. Um, it it is good that it's in the back and not right off. The and that would be my only caveat is 
because it's if it was off to the side like the other one that you the other example mm -hmm. and it was that tall and it, it, it would where it'd be kind of towering that right. would that would be a yeah. problem yeah, yeah but i think because it's directly behind the house it really does become secondary so that's just but i get it anything else Um, just the uh, retaining wall. I agree with the comments that it, it should be brought down to five feet, preferably. Yeah, it would have to be a cantilever engineered footing and wall, but I think it would be better to keep it lower for sure. So we could definitely make that as a, a condition. Mm -hmm. Take a shot at a motion here, since we seem to have said all that we want to say. Yeah, uh, and that is to approve the design. Can you speak up? Uh, I'm, I'm fumbling for words here. Uh, I want to make a motion to approve the design as submitted, subject to the uh, conditions of approval stated by staff, plus the additional condition that the uh, retaining wall behind the garage be maintained at a height of five feet rather than going up to seven. Um, can I ask a question on that motion that you may? Uh, staff was recommending moving the house, but are we in agreement that we can leave the house on the site plan as proposed? Yeah, that that is part and parcel of, of my motion, as as well as the garage height. Uh, yeah, I got you. I'll second that. Does that work? So you'd add a condition to reduce the height of the retaining wall to five feet, mm -hmm. and add a condition to reduce the height of the um, garage. No. 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 Not okay. that one. Not that one. Just just the the five foot retaining wall. Okay. And so, and remove condition number three, that says the house setback should increase along with the height decreasing. Yeah. Get rid of that. Yes. You can get rid of five. Oh, uh, we didn't talk about five, but uh, I will I will amend the uh, motion to delete condition of approval number five as well. Um, can I get a clarification regarding condition six? Um, it's fine. Would the board like to limit the use of composite decking to the just the decking and not the stairs? or just leave that open? I'm content to leave it to, so that it matches all the way down. There you go. Okay. Um, and then the right now the condition is for one new tree. Um, you keep it that way. Mm -hmm. okay. with the hopes that they'll plant more on their own but yeah yeah keep it I mean there is um, so this is planted in the side or rear yard um, I'll just add to the discussion about the garage that you know requiring a tree somewhere in this area in the side yard might help oh yeah shield the massing of the garage sure. yeah um, so we could condition another tree in that location or um, make the condition that the one tree required should be planted right there. Sure. Okay. So, so we'll just clarify the location of that.
Somebody want to second that? I did. Oh, got you. You did? Okay. Thanks. All right. Uh, board member Blythe? Yay. Board member Stobie? Yay. Board member Basinger? Aye. And Chair McLaughlin? Aye. Thank you. Okay, our next item is uh, PC 19-096, continuance GLUA 19-29 and the HR 19-4 historic review for new construction in the Kanema National Register District at 306 4th Avenue. Do we need to talk about that or do we just? Um, we do have a public comment, so oh. I would recommend uh, you, you don't have to go through the whole spiel again. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can open the hearing, take the public comment, and then close it. Uh, make a motion to continue. You don't have to close it, but you can continue okay. until um, a date certain of October 22nd. Okay, so I can officially open the meeting, a public hearing back up. And it's for uh, Paul Edgar. Can I, do you have a lot to do, Paul? <laughs> or should I limit your time? I am again with uh, Fort Kennedy, or not Fort Kennedy, excuse me. No, That's friends. my nonprofit. Uh, <laughs> uh, with the uh, Friends of Kanema. Okay. Uh, again, I would, uh, there are no bungalow houses around this property that are contributing structures and none of the bulk and size that is being proposed. There are no uh, Kanema uh, bungalows that even co uh, come close to this bulk and size. So this is probably twice the size of any bungalow in Kanema of historic nature. So it, there may be something, we should get a list of them if, uh, and I would like to have that uh, as part of the continuance on this hearing is to bring back so we can actually uh, take a look, have a picture of every bungalow in Kanema and take a look at how they compare in, in bulk and size. I think that's an appropriate way to validate the statement that I'm making about it being inappropriate. So you're willing to do that? Uh, I will, uh, yeah, I could do that if uh, with the help of uh, our esteemed Kelly here, we'll identify them and make sure that we're, we're talking, uh, everything is uh, correct. Um, a house, this house with a garage underneath it in a bungalow becomes uh, basically a three-story house by all appearances and there's not any way to mask it. Um, it, it the bungalows in Kanema have all been really one story and not even had an, a loft or attic use. Maybe there is one or two, I'll find out. We'll find out and have that available at the next meeting. Uh, what is important here is that the, is this height is really great, too great. And then I'd like to go back to now to the, uh, to the uh, building guidelines that are part of, uh, of what is states, what is allowable and not allowable. And uh, uh, this, uh, well, I'm trying to find the one that I wanna find. By the way, this Navy, I, we used to own the property uh, and right, right in the area where they, the driveway comes up, it was a landslide. And so this area has, house has geologic hazards associated with it that are within 100 feet of the landslide. Uh, the, uh, let me get two words. The, uh, in, in building placement on, uh, I, I don't remember what page it is, and they get into a uh, 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 building uh, placement 
that is uncharacteristic to the block or the neighborhood, and this is to where it destroys the, the cemetery of the, even of the Kanema neighborhood. And, and this house in this location, my house is vernacular, the house across the street is vernacular, the house right up the street is vernacular, and the house uh, below it is a vernacular. And uh, that are contributing structures and you can only compare them to contributing, contributing structures. Uh, a not allowed in building size is says that a residential building that is more than 20% from the height of the historic neighborhood context uh, buildings unless approved by the HRB. This is one of those things saying it is well exceeds that because of the garage underneath. The residential uh, building ground levels that are elevated uh, less than 18 inches above the ground are not allowed that are, unless they are topo uh, topology considerations. Uh, Kanema uh, residential greater than one and a half stories in height plus a basement, but this case the basement is all exposed. Give you a couple more seconds. And uh, just in bulk and mass uh, of the structures, buildings that are out of scale to the context and the use, and that's one of the critical issues of, of choosing, in this case, a, a, a bungalow design. Uh, All right, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Okay, so we need to uh, call for a, a motion. To continue to, to October continue. 22nd. So moved. Okay. Do we need to second that? Or moves am I? Second. Okay, there you go. Okay, uh, board member Stobie? Yeah. Board member Blythe? Yay. Board member Basinger? Aye. And Chairman Blackham? Aye. Uh, why am I not getting? Uh, hold on a sec. Oh, yeah, I got it. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, preservation grant 19-25 PG 1905 preservation grant for siding, roof, and trim repairs at 115 Madison Street, the Annie Bush House. Okay, uh, we have our fourth grant application this cycle. Um, the request is for $1,000. The project includes uh, roof repair. Um, there's fire damage, um, so there's uh, some of the structural work involved um, of a 12 by 16 area of the roof, uh, roof replacement, um, gutter replacement, siding and trim repair, and then repainting of the areas that were repaired along with the entire house. Um, so some of these items are not typically awarded as uh, preservation grants, so you know, a, a re roof and repainting is considered um, maintenance. typical maintenance that every homeowner has to do, and so the board typically does not uh, award grants for that work. Um, however, um, the repairs um, kind of add up to more than uh, $2,000, um, and so uh, staff's. Uh, thinking is that um, while not the full $22,000 would really be counted as match, um, enough of this work is, uh, could qualify as grant projects that um, you know, we can recommend um, overall uh, still awarding a grant. What's the, where you're seeing is $2,000? Uh, so the siding and trim repair along with the um, structural roof repair. I don't know that grant money could be given to structural. Um, it's really up to the board. So um, it's yeah. up to you all uh, what you want to kind of categorize as. Um, what's appropriate. I don't look at maintenance issues or structural as part yeah. of a grant. Uh, request. That's how I look at it. Um, but as far as the fire damage, one would hope they had insurance to cover that. It's been that way for a while. <laughs> oh. I mean, you could tell that uh, 
there was a fire damage, and then they put the OSB on the roof. Oh, they I bridged see. it, put a new roof on. Uh, like it's been the that way. Straps on the yeah. Split. Plumber's tape uh, is yeah. what that is. Um, yeah. So the applicants here and might be able to explain more about um, some of the repair work um, and if it, any of the painting work um, is related to that in some way. Um, I wasn't able to really break the costs down anymore, but um, maybe the applicant can. Sure. If they want to come up. You state your name and where you live. Good evening. I'm Wendy Marshall, and I live at 115 Madison Street. And I appreciate you guys uh, considering this. So I agree some of the uh, routine maintenance, like painting and roof, um, is typical. On the Historic Preservation Grant Program, application, it does state that um, historic buildings desiring to make exterior rehabilitation or renovation improvements, structural improvements to preserve the integrity of the structure may also qualify. So that's why I submitted this. The things that are above and beyond, um, like uh, Kelly mentioned, there was a fire sometime in the past. They, You saw how they repaired it. Yeah. So I am... Um, I want to fix that before there is actually a problem. And that is on the front part of the house. I don't know if you have an overall, but it's to the right, on the right-hand picture. It's over the very front, on the right, above uh, the porch. Okay. Yeah, that piece. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. And then another thing that's not typical, so the whole house has got um, original channel drop siding, but that piece that's circled in black, that is some... LP siding or something, and they're going to replace that with channel drop, similar in appearance or, or as close as they can get, so that'll match the rest <coughs> of the house. And the other one is in the left-hand photo. So they apparently had a door there, and when they put a slider on the back, actually that was on the inventory, so it was at least 2002. They slapped that siding right over it. They didn't align it horizontally or um, they didn't set it in the hole. And that's going to take a little bit more. We actually took off one of the boards to see what was under there, so we're going to have to to do a little bit of work to get the boards to set in, and that will smooth that out. Um, on the front, I don't think I have it circled. I don't know if you have all the photos up there. Maybe. I'm not sure if I submitted it, but on the, if you go right there, in the middle, the water table on the bottom, that has been broken off, and that's another thing that'll be replaced. And um, just taking all the details like that and getting them back to where this uh, little house can... But you've got the heat pump line set right there. Right. And you're... It was broken off before that was put there. Gotcha. And that part will be painted to match the house, the siding. And there's another one you can see by the window. They just, some of the windows be, were smaller than original, and you can see the the work they did. They left a lot of the siding broken, and I'm going to get that fixed. Uh, let's see. You've got, you've got different siding throughout the house, it looks like. That one picture with the three black circles, that sidewall is a different... Right, side. and that's... Um, that. And it's all period. There's a corner here that looked like it was a porch or something because there's a vertical line on the, the left black circle that something happened there that they put a, a vertical piece of wood or something to... And then they yeah, and I, I couldn't tell what that was. And, um, Evolution of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are, um, I think, at least four or five different sections of the house. Yeah. But yeah, that siding that's on the top floor on the front facing, that's the part that's really inconsistent with the channel drop, and we're gonna replace that. Got it. Does anybody have any other questions? No? 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, so now that I see what we're looking at here with the plumber's tape on the rafters, I'm inclined to agree that that definitely qualifies under structural uh, necessity. Yeah, it's interesting that that fire occurred. There's skip sheeting on one side and it probably burned through the, the roof and then they just put the OSB on and put a roof on it. Mm -hmm. That it may not have been an insurance thing. Um, I mean, they may not have had it. Right. Um, So they're asking that that was done by a professional builder. No, I no. <laughs> Looks like an open junction box right there. Mm -hmm. um, so they're asking for a thousand dollars. She's asking for a thousand dollars. That's for sure. Um, okay, somebody want to make a motion on on it's your turn. Mm, okay. this this grant. Uh, I move to approve a grant of one thousand dollars for application uh, nineteen five twenty five PG nineteen oh five at one one five Madison Street. There a second. Ah, oh, there you go. All right. All right, Commissioner or uh, Board Member Basinger. Aye. Board Member Scobie. Aye. Board Member Blythe. Aye. Chair McLaughlin. Aye. Okay. All right. Um, thank, thank you. you. Uh, next item is uh, 19095 letter of support for a technical assistance grant to update the comprehensive plan. Did everybody read that letter? I have a copy, a hard copy here, if you're all willing to sign it. Um, you signed a similar letter a couple of months, or several months ago, um, for a different grant for the same project. So we're applying for two grants uh, to combine um, the funding to update our comp plan, comprehensive plan. Um, so this is for the second grant, and we're applying for about $100,000 from the Department of Land Conservation and Development, and um, we're looking for uh, letters of support from all of our boards and commissions. Groovy. I don't think you need a motion. No, we just need to sign the thing. Okay, so we can all sign that on our way out. Um, anything else? Communications, anything like that? <coughs> uh, I don't think I have anything for Okay, you. then we can adjourn. So everybody